Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take a midweek break, and actually, we're just going to sit around and talk about some of the things that we want to talk about going on in the world of Linux, open source, um, Raspberry Pis. That's coming up later. Um, I'm Vin Stone. That mm -hmm. is Joe Bryant. <laughs> and the man on the island, uh, that is one Pedro Mateus. <laughs> you, you have to, we'll, we'll have to cut Pedro a little slack. He's in that horrible situation of like, I've ordered the new Ryzen processor and they haven't shipped it uh. yet. <laughs> I still haven't shipped it. It's been a, like almost a week. <laughs> and we were talking about before we went live that AMD, trust me, we'll, we'll get to the news thing, but we want to cover this real quick, is... There's no place, there's no local shops that have it in stock. No, no, yeah. they have the 3600, the non-X version. It's like the 3600X, the 3700X, and the 3900X. Nowhere to be found. And AMD, not AMD, we love you, AMD. Amazon <laughs> has did the thing of, like, well, you can cancel your order. <laughs> yeah, we haven't taken your money yet. <laughs> We, you can just cancel your orders. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> can you get the thing to me by the date that you say on the page? There, it's like, yeah, that's that's, you know, that's when you're lined up. You're that's when your place in the queue will come. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. Sunday it is. It'll be good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Amazon, Amazon's got you. I, I got faith in Amazon. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's what Pedro's been up to. Jill, you have paragraphs of things you've been doing. What have you been doing? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I've been sharing the Linux GameCast love as the community organizer in Morales R. So I had a great time with Chris Fisher on Jupiter Broadcasting's The Friday Stream, where I gave out Linux game keys to two lucky winners of an online Who Wants to Be a Millionaire game. That was really a lot of fun. And we had a great conversation about our first vehicles, of which I couldn't drive. It was my Chevy Nova. <laughs> so, <laughs> and also, also, had fun Saturday on Big Daddy Linux Live once again. So I'm doing that monthly as well. So just had a very nice. busy week with podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is a beautiful thing about Jill has actually this thing called like not a chaotic work schedule and she can do things like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to show up <laughs> and give away free keys and spread yeah. cheer. Yeah. I, I, I spread cheer. I try to spread cheer, but people run. <laughs> It's kind of sad. <laughs> I try to spread cheer and people look at me funny. <laughs> I'll get back to you that on that one Saturday. Um, okay. <laughs> man, I've been um, playing around a lot of stuff well, outside of my upcoming adventures um, at the DMV. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, looking, actually, I went ahead and ordered one. Are you like this? Do you order stuff off eBay regularly, Pedro? regularly well like mm -hmm. once a month yeah once a month okay yeah. you, you guys yeah. it. maybe you at home kind of feel the same way if i'm ordering off amazon even if amazon costs more for stuff and i <laughs> go look at the stuff i plan on buy it usually has refurbished or renewed next to it because that's how i roll and um but with amazon you get the wrong <laughs> thing or whatever you're like you take it back and it's not a problem mm -hmm. ebay is going to be you know per seller do you read yeah. descriptions like nuclear launch codes because you're looking for the OPS? This is not the real thing. It's just a picture of it. Deal with it. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. You have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, I think I tracked one down. I'm looking for, um, I have an ancient Nikon digital camera. How ancient is it? D60. The budget version of the D80 from oh, 2004, yeah. whenever that came out. So I found the body on Amazon for, for a 3400, which would be interesting. Because uh, I want to do some more stuff. I made a video for like uh, replacing the tube and a preamp for like the 10 people who ever need. But the teardown and the setup to do that took longer than mm -hmm. doing the video. And I'm talking about recording and yeah. editing, uploading it. So I wanted something like that. And I have a bunch of glass for it. And, you know, I'll probably use a prime lens or anything like that. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. Hopefully that'll show up before the end of the week, but I don't know if like all the power adapters yeah. and stuff I need. So stay tuned for adventures in oh, photography. Adventures. With, <laughs> it's got an HDMI out. I guess I could technically use it as like a camera, like video camera, but I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. shall see. Stay tuned. Maybe I'll make a video of that. How do you connect it to Linux? Cool. Plug. Mm -hmm. Done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't work immediately after you plugged it in, 
yeah, sorry. I got to make that video. I want to do it. It's like, oh, how do you connect a multi-channel professional interface? Just USB plug. How do you connect an HDMI video encoder? Connected. How do you connect a 10 gigabit Ethernet? Stick it in. <laughs> plug it in. Yeah. <laughs> right. We would, hey. we would install a wireless Xbox. Plug it in. And just, yes. uh, I want to do an entire like supercut video of that answering all the <laughs> questions. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> anyway, something that is not terribly brilliant is evil gnomes. Mm -mm. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh. My genuine, genuine spy. Yeah. Just, this happened this morning. <laughs> yeah. Mike hit me up on Twitter, and despite him giving me so much trouble about my fabulously black shirts that I wear, um. <laughs> This uh, since it's a little bit, it's a new backdoor implant, and it actually spies on Linux desktop, and it does more than you know, like oh, it's you know capturing. It this is doing keystroke logging, screenshots. Um, what else can this thing do, man? Is there anything it audio? Can? Oh yes, audio. Yeah. And this is legit. This isn't theoretical. It's like this is something that we've actually found, and it shows up in the form of well. It, disguises itself as a legitimate gnome extension so okay yeah here we go here we go uh sound image um it's got a butt key oh uh, yeah this is real this mm. is bad kids this, mm -hmm. so uh, and it's that we know the attack vector and we know what it does it's like this this is an actual linux vulnerability this is an actual linux malware example not whatever the what do they call it hidden wasp has been wa wasp has yeah. been wasp yeah has <laughs> been wasp has been wasp <laughs> are you, are you, are you uh, yes i practice wasp has been wasp has been tree has been tree Yeah, so, you know, many of us who use no use extensions to fix all the things and, and the things that are missing. So hey, uh, hey make Jill, sure, you everyone know. who uses GNOME uses extensions because the base desktop exactly. environment crap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So you can make sure that you're um, uh, check that if you've you have been infected or not, and it's in the show notes, and it, it's not hard to find. It's in uh, Home Cache, GNOME Software, GNOME Shell Extensions Directory, and it's the GNOME Shell EXT. <laughs> yeah, and uh, make sure yeah. to check your cron tabs as well, because that's how we yes. set up persistency. To yeah. run every minute. <laughs> See, if every minute I saw a cron go off, it's like, what? What's going on? <laughs> do, do you, I get suspicious if I see too much hard drive activity. I'm like, that's an H top. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely something you can it's look like, for. Yeah. <laughs> if that bottom LED turns on, it's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I was just 100% curious about that. Um, <laughs> so the moral of the story is that uh, watch Netflix for free extension that you downloaded off Mega, probably not real. Um, <laughs> yes, probably. But hey, man, no <laughs> extensions or anything they can't do. I mean, real simple. <laughs> me, you know, mm -hmm. the XFC for Zealot. I mean, like, I got a simple fix for you, but it that would be silly. And then I recommend that. Uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for that. That that that's like Windows level malware type stuff. Yeah, right? because uh, yeah. no extensions are that thing that. Okay, there's the official place where you can get them, which is the recommended place and where you should get them. Uh, but then there's a bunch of like other projects that's like, oh, I made a new one. It's not on the GNOME extensions yet, but you can build it and run it yourself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of mm -hmm. people still have that mentality. It's like, okay, yeah. I'll just build this. Mm -hmm. And when you build it, you got spyware. NPM install mm -hmm. would like <laughs> JavaScript developers. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, but let's talk about some uh, laptops. You, you're the laptop human here. Mm -hmm. I am. I guess I am. Uh, I like laptops. And uh, one of my favorite laptops is a Dell XPS, having had a chance to use one of the 9360s oh, no, don't for buy me. a while. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, you know they what? really, I'm, I'm really nice. a bigger issue with. Uh, dude's got an outdoor patio stool indoors 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure he walked outside, brought it back, and put the laptop on. It's like cool, then put it back outside. Uh, but yeah, uh, the author of this particular Medium article uh, is saying that he had some Linux woes with his XPS, despite having bought the uh, version that came with Linux pre-installed. Uh, the issues that he had were that it came with a killer Wi-Fi NIC. And yeah, it comes with Ubuntu 1804 pre-installed. And um, it was the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth that also dropped off uh, at one point, which, yes, that is a bug with some killer nicks. It's the power savings. If you get rid of those, they'll go away. Yeah. And a couple of others. And he, you know, as a responsible Dell owner, he called Dell support. And it's like, yeah, this thing isn't working. And they said, it's like, well, um that is uh, the most up-to-date version. You can just wait on the updates. It's like, okay, what if I want to install Windows? Well, you can't. We're not giving you the Windows image because you bought the Linux version. So now he feels a little bit betrayed. And, uh, dude, if Dell support refuses to support you, nuke the default install and set your own preferred distro. Just do it by yourself. It'll be a learning experience. You'll actually learn a lot. And... As someone who used an XPS for a while, I can tell you for a fact, those are very nice Linux laptops. Uh, it really does suck that you spent a ton of money and now Dell support just outright refused to uh, mm -hmm. do their job. But welcome to the real world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've... <laughs> I've uh... Read other complaints about the XPS 13. I was I was curious, so I I went and looked at that. But the complaints um, um, don't outweigh the all the positives from this laptop. And we have even featured news stories here on LWW about that about how much people love their XPS 13 laptops, and that it is one of the flagship Linux laptops. Yep. And uh, yeah, they they nailed it with that one. <laughs> So I was really sorry that this writer had a, you know, had issues. <laughs> so what's the deal? Did uh, I didn't get a chance to read this article? Did it come with Linux preloaded? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and it uh, has issues. <laughs> yeah. So what what was this problem with support exactly? Uh, support couldn't figure out the issues. Okay. And they gave him thirty he, days. Yeah, yeah, they gave him thirty days, and um. Well, 30 days from the date of uh, invoice, okay. not from the date of receiving the laptop. Mm. So, yeah, you couldn't just, you know, return it. One thing that stuck out when I was just going through that, um, what you guys were um, telling me about, it was 1804. Is there anything with that XPS that couldn't be solved by 1910? Uh, no. You don't even need to do that. You just no. uh, enable the hardware enablement stack, the HWE uh, stack. We'll bring down new kernel, new Mesa, and a bunch of new other okay, packages, and we'll fix this. most of those. Okay, there's that, <laughs> and like, put this stick in a USB port and cut it on. <laughs> See, that goes into what I say. Just set up your own distro. <laughs> It'll fix most of the issues. And yeah, the ones that you can't, you can just Google for them and then fix them yourself. Learning experience. <laughs> Do I see Dak uh, has one? That is the yep. thing. <laughs> I, I'm going to say Dell, if you're buying, you know, Linux support and Dell, if you know, if you already know how to Linux mm -hmm. this, you already know how to Linux bra. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're looking for the, like a longer support and something like that, because you're going to pay extra for the support, get a system 76. Yes. <laughs> get a tuxedo. tuxedo. Get an intraware. Yeah. Get, <laughs> get somebody who specializes. Like, this is what we do. We get up and eat this in the morning. And that didn't yep. come out right. Anyway. So, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, speaking of Ubuntu 18.04, yay! Now the latest NVIDIA graphics drivers can be installed directly in Ubuntu 18.04 LTS using the software and updates additional drivers menu. And now this is really awesome because there's no more need to install a PPA or download the NVIDIA driver manually from the NVIDIA website. That's just, this is so awesome and so wonderful. And, you know, Popey has been talking about Ubuntu doing this for quite some time now. So I'm so happy they finally launched this. And, uh, of course, this comes in uh, at the heels of System76 Pop OS did this by offering their NVIDIA drivers 
a specific ISO. And now the rest of the distros will f definitely fall sweet. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> sweet? Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, see, it see, only yeah. took this them is, is how many years? Fall sweet? Fall suit. <laughs> suit. Well, sweet. I've heard it sweet as well. <laughs> follow suit. Suit. <laughs> You follow okay. suit. <laughs> okay, okay. Steve's husband can correct, can verify that. <laughs> yeah, Steve's husband. Uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, only took him how many years? Uh, how long has uh, Ubuntu been around and people have been asking for a really easy way uh, to um, install the NVIDIA drivers? Because... Well, let's be honest. There's been a ton of articles from tech journalists and uh, like hobby bloggers is like, oh yeah, Linux, uh, you can do everything, but you need to go into the command line and going to the command line feels like going back to the 90s. We still see those articles to this day. And, uh, you know, being the user-friendly distribution, or at least that's what they're attempting to be, I think. I'm not sure anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Yeah, you'd think that they would have been the ones to come out with, it's like, okay, you can First, use the, yeah. like, up-to-date mm -hmm. NVIDIA drivers um, on the LTSs, which, yet, <laughs> I don't know, in my head it's like, why wasn't this already a thing? Why did it take them so long? One of the things I saw, I forget who it was, it might have been on Twitter, and I'm like, well, we weren't fully aware that people wanted... You know, they were like looking for maximum compatibility. So that was one of the justifications for shipping, you know, older long term drivers, which I get. But the option is like, but in addition to that, it should be a click away to. Yeah, it's like, okay, ship with the 340 or yeah. the, I don't know, 390 mm. versions of the drivers. Just let people move up to the 430s if they want. It, it makes perfect sense. Anyway, I, this is not just with Ubuntu. I mean, anything that is running off that PPA, I mean, so yep. like your mints and stuff like that, all that. Mm -hmm. But this is good. And I, I've never understood. Actually, I've never been a fan of the argument. I'm like, well, I had to open a command line. I'm like, okay, so in Windows, you don't have to go to a website, download and zip file, decompress that, install that, click the next button a billion times, and hopefully, <laughs> oh, and yes, reboot. but it's like a goo. I know, yeah. but that makes me feel like I'm going back to play school. <laughs> Talk about going back to the dark ages. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think it's really good because everyone can experience the raging speed that is that NVIDIA, just that NVIDIA PPA. It's, that is the one that I can hit that I know I can get up and make tea. Yep. Yep. Every, every, uh, this is a true story at the end of the day. Anyway, so a uh, little bit more news mm -hmm. from Hong mm -hmm. Ubuntu. Uh, Fedora is disabling the Snap plugin for GNOME software. And your first thoughts like, well, it wasn't like out of the box in the first place. No, it's not there by default. No, it's not. But it's going to be completely disabled in Fedora 31. And there's like, hey, man, we're not a huge fan of testing this in production in the first place. So it's just not going to be there. And, um, they cited a few things like snaps, you know, they get updated in the background, you know, behind known software's back. And uh, even the GNOME software team, I went and dug around. They're thinking about just dropping snap support. Well, they're having a conversation about it. And like at the end, they're well, like, okay, we'll deal with this later on. It's not that they have a problem with snaps. No, this is, there's no snap hate here at all going on. This is everyone going, we're going to do your own snap store. We all know this. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's like, let's not, you know, mm -hmm. the gnome teams, like it's just a bunch of extra code at that point. We don't need to bother maintaining that if snaps are going to have its own thing. Well, there's, there's no hate from gnome, but there was a lot of uh, hate from Fedora, especially yeah. if you uh, mm -hmm. enabled um snaps because snaps have that weird behavior especially in the gnome software thing which if you look for something uh for a bit of software that's available both as a uh, like an rpm or a snap then gnome software would prefer the snap 
And when you clicked on the application that you wanted to install, it would install the Snap version instead. So a lot of people weren't happy because all of a sudden the GNOME system monitor uh, took two seconds to open instead of just opening like it's supposed to. And Look at, mm. quit being a negative, Nancy. Look at the positive <laughs> side. It's easy to find the snaps. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. You can tell it's like, why are you taking so... Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah and <laughs> one of the things that brought up uh they brought up in the article is like uh sandboxing in snaps is still not working is that just in fedora well it's fedora or in general because you know <laughs> they got the uh what's it security thing that everyone disables like on the se linux that's the that's my <laughs> that's my sweetheart right there i lasted four <laughs> days which is a record for me on fedora <laughs> Basically, you can get uh, Clinux to behave if you run it for like a week. Make sure to start every single application that you use. Everything I know I needed to know about SE Linux is the fact that it ships with an application called SE Linux Troubleshooter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like understood. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like the bug reporter. It's the second thing that goes away. Uh, <laughs> and in all fairness, I think everybody tries to live with SE Linux for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I- on uh, one of the the Precision laptop, it's still there. It's still active because I'm not running Steam on it. Because if I was running Steam on it, I would have already gone, you know what? F this. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Admittedly, if it was a work machine, it would stay there and I would live with it. But given the choice, nah, yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> but yeah, it, even uh, like the if you go down into the comments of the uh, OMG Ubuntu mm-hmm. article, it's like... Oh, everyone seems to uh, be a little too keen to say, why don't you just, you know, uh, uninstall Snaps? And then there's a Linux user that is like, the first thing I do on Ubuntu is uninstall Snaps. Like, my man! (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Sudo apt purge snap star. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Yeah, you know, and Fedora users can still install Snaps via the command line, as long as, of course, the core SnapD package remains available. And also, a new Snap store by Canonical is in the works, and Fedora users will be able to install Snaps from there. So for those who use Snaps under Fedora, no worries. (laughs) Yep. That's... um... It's going to be interesting. Uh, I mean, a Snap Store is a better place. Yeah. Than GNOME is, software. Yeah. Because then you end up with like the confusion of is this the Snap or is the real version? Yeah. Either really make that very obvious you're about to install a Snap. If you want the native package, click here. Like, okay, I'll click there instead. I mean, <laughs> we should say non containerized version. <laughs> See, I just saved you from having to write that. <laughs> Comment. <laughs> okay, man. Uh, let's pick on Fedora for a little bit because uh, yeah. <laughs> they deserve it. I, in this case, they do. And they've kind of addressed it in Fedora magazine with an article called mm. What is Silver Blue? Question mark, to which I said, if we're going to be honest, and the Silver Blue web zone doesn't do an incredibly good job at exactly explaining what Silver Blue is. You can read over and you're like, ah, oh, okay, what? Is it just a different, what is it exactly? What does it actually mean? Well, the term Silver Blue, uh, in short, doesn't have any hitting meaning. Well, okay, 150 word, pff, that doesn't even explain what it is. Come on. <laughs> am I am I right by saying this, Pedro? If I if I was going to have like short mm. story this, this is like flat pack the dust roll, right? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and uh, Jill brought up a good point. Jill, uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it, to me, this reminds me of Intel's Clear Linux. You know, yep. the Fedora desktop <laughs> OS that containerizes all the things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, and if you, uh, one of the things that they say is like Silver Blue, it works in a way similar to. Well, I guess the closest one is uh, Chrome OS, actually, like the Atomic yeah. updates, because if you get an update, it doesn't actually update any of the software in what's currently running. What's currently running is an image that gets loaded uh, at uh, boot time. So basically what Silverblue does is something very similar. It, uh, If you run an update or if you change some of the core packages around, it updates the image. And once you reboot, you'll be running the new version. Which then led me to continue reading. It's like, oh, but we have uh, the traditional six months uh, release cycle. 
uh, with which will have a each version will be supported for nine months. It's like, um, okay, but why though? If you're already if you're doing atomic updates like Chrome OS style updates, why have a traditional release model? Why do you hate freedom, Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate freedom. It's just why though? <laughs> Straw man it gets me out. Of t- um, I saw that Arthur and he threw a thing in our show notes. Um, our beautiful party mm-hmm. pigeons. Uh, you can do that. Mentioning that Fedora is um, looking at not, no longer shipping i six eighty six with like kernel packages and stuff like that. Do you think is Silver Blue still going to have that option to mm-hmm. maintain that? Do you think they'll keep it or? I mean, if there's a bit of software that gets bundled up and uh, into a, a well, flat what pack, I'm trying to say is, it'd be easier to maintain that functionality. Oh yeah, Silver Blue. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, definitely. It, like Jill mentioned, uh, most of it comes down uh, in a container form. Hmm. A great deal of them are uh, flat packs. Uh, it's the one thing that isn't containerized is like the core operating system, which they make sure to point out. That uh, Silver Blue is not the same as Fedora Core. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, this is more like a desktop version of like Fedora Core OS. Yeah. Yes. But with no. the virtualization. <laughs> yeah. Analogies, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's Radical like oversimplification. The Fedora- Help me out. <laughs> Fedora version of Nick sauce. I don't like Nix's sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Moving <Yeah>. on. <laughs> okay, so going from uh, the freedom to the proprietary. Let's say you want to run the proprietary NVIDIA drivers um, on your Optimus laptop. Like, you know, if you have the dedicated GPU and you want to make use of it, chances are you kind of want to. But there's no real easy way to do it with uh, Fedora in the same way that Ubuntu does it, which is by using NVIDIA Prime. Uh, You can use Bumblebee, but that means that both video cards are always on at the same time. But the fine folks uh, at, well, I guess Magmast is the uh, repo owner, uh, they created Fedora Prime. And Fedora Prime is exactly what it sounds like. It lets you use NVIDIA Prime uh, to shut down the uh, dedicated GPU and only use the Intel one. Or if you want to use the dedicated GPU, then the G- uh, dedicated GPU is the one that you use for everything. Hmm. So it works the same way that uh, if you do a like uh, out-of-the-box install of Ubuntu Mate, uh, you get a little thing on the tray yeah. that lets you choose between the two um, GPUs, and it's when you pick the other one, it goes, okay, you need to like log out and log back in to enable the XOR config and bring the device up. And it works. Uh, there's nothing like that on Fedora until now. Uh, this one is not as out of the box as uh, that Ubuntu, teeny tiny little Ubuntu... Um, program but it gives you very similar functionality so that's good <laughs> so this is bumblebee for fedora right? yeah no the bumblebee well, for it's... fedora is a completely different thing <laughs> yeah it is yeah, <laughs> well you're confusing me jill is it or is it not no well it is it's just an alternative way to do it and it's easier <laughs> Pedro. yeah no <laughs> 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 the way that Bumblebee works, and as much as I wish it worked the same way as uh, the Optimus functionality does on Windows, it doesn't, because you need to have both the Intel and the NVIDIA cards running at once. It's just that the NVIDIA card doesn't get used unless you run it with the Prime Run command mm. or the Opti Run command. And the um, with... NVIDIA Prime, you just switch between the two cards. You just have to log out and back in. So what you're telling me is okay. just mm-hmm. always run with the um, discrete graphics on. <laughs> yeah. That's how most people end up doing it, yeah. All right, fair mm-hmm. enough. Hey, maybe you can do it on Endeavor <laughs> OS, the arch-based distro that we've talked about. 
Yes, uh, it is the continuation of the uh, now defunct Entergos, and I'm totally going to start calling it Ender Endeavorous, <laughs> uh, because that's how it's spelled. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's basically the community that, that was using uh, Entergos, uh, and they wanted the distro to continue, and they got together and they said that they were going to be releasing something very soon, and well... Here it is. It's the very first stable release of Endeavorous, and you can go there, download it. If you're a big fan of Energos, you can keep that uh, dream alive, you know, right up until Manjaro mm -hmm. decides to eat uh, whatever breakfast you happen to bring in today, because yes, Energos, it tried to do like the user-friendly thing for Arch. Um... But then Manjaro came in and ate their cake. Jill? Yeah. Well, I was really impressed with how fast, considering that in May we talked about the spirit of the Interagos project will continue on in a new distro called Endeavor. And uh, it was really awesome because the call from the, the Linux community and Interagos community for support came through really quickly, too. I was really impressed. <laughs> it's awesome. And, and I, it runs really nicely, too. I hope they do something <laughs> to stay relevant, because it's like, they gotta be, they gotta do something different, otherwise they're just going to languish there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always the optimist, that boy. Um, <laughs> so if I, if I get to, if I do this once and I, um, VM, I can yeah, tell you. Yeah, you can claim to have okay. installed an arch. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Run arch. Oh. Run arch. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Okay. <laughs> Teleport. Uh, one thing that's always been a problem for networks is sending files over the local one. Maybe? Question mark. Mm. Has that been a problem? I, uh, allegedly. Um, well, according to uh, Julian, it has been. So <laughs> he has created Teleport. It's a native GTK3 app, good on that, uh, to effortlessly share files over the local network. <laughs> so, yeah. It's supposedly a replacement for, you know, sneaker net, like, you know, your USB key, or I would call it Google Drive net because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> sending my data bits to a server across the country to get it on the <laughs> laptop next to me seems to work pretty good. Yeah, It's available as a flat pack. Uh, you can throw it on there. And so this is just like pushing it, right, Pedro? Oh, yeah. This is straight up just file pushing. Uh, yeah. I see the appeal. It's like, okay, you don't have to have an FTP server running on every single box, so you can just go to your file explorer and type FTP, whatever. Uh, or NFS. You don't have to type NFS, whatever. Or SSHFS, so you go to your terminal and you type SSHFS. The point is, uh, we've <laughs> moved on from file pushing or at least I thought so. Because yeah. as it stands, um, yeah, even SSHFS is more useful in the way that it sends you, uh, it lets you, even SCP. SCP lets you uh, send uh, or fetch multiple files at once, and this one only lets you do one at a time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, well, it definitely <laughs> reminds me of the old days of sharing files between PCs via a single Ethernet or USB cable. Remember those days? except mm -hmm. a more modern version using notifications. And you don't have to have the physical cable. <laughs> but in the future, Teleport will be able to send multiple files and folders and have native Android, Mac OS, iOS, and Windows apps. So that that's pretty cool, actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. If you can make it that easy, uh, honestly, the easiest thing is something like Google Drive. For me... All these boxes have, you know, just for the network, the local network, um, SSH. So mm -hmm. I just Thunar and, you know, every one of these boxes has a save folder with the save credentials of SFTP. Boom. You get your nice little drag and drop GUI because I have to do a very roundabout. Like when I get done with the show today, I'll have 15 gigs of uh, audio for my door that I have to get off Jackbox and put it over on the thread ripping box to get everything exported out. And I was yeah. just like, click, drag, drop, done. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is, like, I would like to, here, here's what I'd like, an easy way to send links outside of, like, 
having to Google Messenger yourself. You like just text yourself. Here's the, yeah, this is, this is the way to do it. You know, I'm talking about like getting it to your Android device. I'm like, oh, I want to watch this, but I want to watch it on the tablet, and I don't want to have to look it up again. Yeah, there there was push bullet. Uh, I think they're still around. Uh, that that let you do that. That was one of the functionality that they had. But then yeah. they started it's like, oh yeah, you, you want to keep doing that? You know that one thing that um, people used it for, which was to send like videos and whatnot to a from the desktop uh, browser mm -hmm. to the mobile device. Yeah, you're going to have to pay us money for that. Yeah. And people went, yeah. nope. <laughs> that, that, Google, Google. Yeah. Take uh, if you could just take like ten minutes off being evil. Got an idea. Right click on a YouTube video from my desktop and give me an option to send a device. Yeah. Just boom and it just give me because you do it when I install stuff. You'd give me a list of all the tablets in this house and, mm -hmm. and I just pick it. Just do that so it'll start playing. That'd be awesome. Then you can totes go back to being evil. Mm -hmm. All right. Like Ten minutes. <laughs> Get that done. All right. Uh the fun is back in 3D. Yeah. So Blender 2.8. Point eight zero release candidate is it now available for you to download and you know we've been following the blender 2.0 2.80 beta and now we have the release candidate which is really awesome and as we've talked about before this new version has a completely new user interface with major changes i can't stand it i don't like it this does not look like <laughs> developer ui oh well it's the, no, it looks it's, like photoshop yeah <laughs> Well, they were trying to be in line with the other major 3D software. I was going to know, say 2004. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 yeah, they're, they're trying to have the look and feel of the 3D Studio Max and uh, Mayas of the world. And it has a new uh, physically based time, real time renderer called EV, which works great. And um, the new uh, 2D animation grease pencil is really amazing and the ray tracing and render engine cycles now renders 30 percent faster and lets you combine gpu and cpu rendering and this is the first definitely a first in the industry and yeah this what was really what i was really excited about was the opencl gpu rendering times have greatly improved which will help make opencl gpus amd radions a much more compelling option now which is really, really wonderful. And I tested this on my AMD RX 580, and it, it rendered so much faster than uh, previously on AMD hardware. Nice. I was really <laughs> impressed. <laughs> I like it. I'm down really with it. Awesome. Looking at the UI, mm -hmm. it definitely came kicking and screaming into like early to mid 2000s. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of that. And uh, I, same thing. I mean, trust me, you think... This UI is bad. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Roll it back. It, it, <laughs> the current UI, the brand new hotness, that, that just makes mm -hmm. it too easy. Then, then we're going to have casuals using Blender. Arr. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. It's pretty super sweet. Uh, one thing that, you know, it's like RIP every tutorial made in the past 10 years. And. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that's just reality uh, michael yeah. I, I know you're listening michael immediately jumped into our <laughs> show notes because i've never seen somebody get defensive about software but that boy gets defensive about software um he's like no you don't have to worry about that because apparently you can turn on something that listen this mm -hmm. is going to be reality classic. the old classic yeah. key map. Yeah. it's key basically map. the old yeah. keyboard shortcuts <laughs> yeah that's great because people who are reading tutorials know <laughs> keyboard shortcuts <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is pretty cool though. I look forward to it because I might finally be able to use my Turing NV encode. Yes. Yeah. Which, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've not been like, oh, this is horrible because I got a thread wrapper, but still it'd be nice not to heat the entire house to render things. Um, good times. Mm -hmm. Pedro, do, or, uh, have they sold you or you finally become the uh, 3D <laughs> artist that you've always dreamed of? <laughs> I don't touch the art stuff. That's Nori's <laughs> thing. <laughs> I do the computer stuff. She does the art stuff. That that's but, our jam. But, but you do the cooking, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> no art. Cooking is a science. <laughs> cooking is a science. 
Oh yeah, you were. Trying. It's alchemy. <laughs> it can be an art form too. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, the baking of cakes is an art form, and uh, Nori bakes the cakes. <laughs> this is why you have a fear of slinkies. Um, <laughs> good on them. Uh, I look forward to playing with this. I haven't had a chance to a reason. My biggest issue, it's not even an issue with Blender. It's, it's, it's I, I've said this multiple times. I apologize. Is I only learn Blender for a day at a time. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And if my life is going well, I only have to do that like twice a year and immediately forget. So I, next time I have to figure out how to blender, it's going to be more interesting <laughs> because we're going to need new tutorials. Anyway, on the topic of blender real quick, internet outrage, Pedro. Oh yeah. Uh, so mm. Epic games supports the blender foundation with wait for it. 1.2 million dollars. <laughs> yes. So, uh, if you were asking the million dollar question, the answer is blender. Uh, and yeah, it's, um, you have blender themselves saying, thank you very much. And then you have this quote of, uh, Tim Sweeney, which says open tools, libraries, and platforms are critical to the future of digital content. And to that, I say, Oh, isn't it wonderful to be human, to be, uh, <laughs> susceptible to the level of cognitive dissonance that goes on in Mr. Sweeney's head. Yeah. So, uh, you know, my opinion, awesome. That's great. It's actually awesome that uh, Epic is actually giving Blender the money instead of using it to buy exclusives for the Epic Store. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Kudos. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and, I'm glad they're doing yeah. good with Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say that Unreal Engine benefits from Blender via open source animation and rendering plugins and 3D modeling assets, um, just like all the other 3D animation softwares do in the industry. So it behooves them to, you know, fund Blender because guess what? Guess where most of the models for the Unreal Engine come from? <laughs> Blender. <laughs> Unity so. assets or Unity, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> being honest yeah I mean. <laughs> pirated unity assets but whatever well the, a lot of those come from blender again unity yes. is not not good at modeling most of the assets for unity oh, no no we were just saying Unreal. where they come from yeah no you, you said where do they come from it's like yes oh, oh I see. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a thing um yeah the internet uh, i think there was an attempt at some meltdown it's like we need to attach this to the exclusivity stuff that epic's doing that i don't think anyone's really a fan of outside of them there's no way to do that you can't tie this into the blender this is this is just good this would be like the same thing it's a blender foundation these are solid people they're like hey thanks for the money and just like if somebody walked up to us and they're like here's fifty thousand dollars same way with the blender foundation and it's like but hey we need you to do slam doors like peace out it's like, here's your money back. Goodbye. No, no, they're not getting their money back. <laughs> That's the difference between us and the Blender Foundation. We're going to keep the money. <laughs> they just keep on doing what we want. So don't worry about it. It's going to be just more, more good stuff coming out of them. And it's good for them to have funding. Speaking of funding. Yep. Beautiful people. Uh, if you like what we do, we're commercial free. Uh, we don't even have ads on our web zone. And uh, you're making that possible. We have 115 beautiful, beautiful people. Financing nuts, just the show, everything we do on Tuesdays, everything we do on Thursdays, and that big show we do on Saturdays. Uh, that's brilliant. If you come to Patreon, you get access to our, we get a Discord, don't we, Pedro? Yes, we do. We do? And uh, it has Yay. two text uh, channels and four different audio channels <laughs> that uh, people uh, will hang around at some point. There's even a creep chosen that you get special access to. Uh, you can well, totally it, now you spoiled the surprise. Yeah, you could totally creep on us while we're setting up. <laughs> we do, man. That thing we uh, that is like a big thank you for you know. It's like, hey, man, if you just like want to throw some money at us, we're like, come on, mm-hmm. have it back. No, it's like, yeah, we're starting this, so you get to listen in. Come on, <laughs> we do that, uh, especially for Saturday, an hour. By the way, we're doing the um, like Steamcast Weekly an hour earlier, but an hour before that, we go live. We cut on the mm-hmm. um audio channel and discord so you can hop in and participate and that's just what we're up to what we got planned on going behind the scenes type stuff that we do each and every week and uh that's really cool uh 
interesting community we have. <laughs> Very awesome. chill considering like just <laughs> the randomness and just the scope of differences and personalities, everybody getting along. We have IRC yep. that everyone's on live. We don't do paywall that, but we do have the uh, separate mm -hmm. channel that's not tied into IRC. So you can kind of like hide out there with us the other six days of the week and pretend the internet's a nicer place than it actually <laughs> is. But Jill. Yes. So we have uh, mostly Linux uh, is uh, donating to us via Libera Pay, which we've uh, reinitialized. And thank you again, mostly Linux. And we have a new person, David, um, also donating via Libera Pay. <laughs> pretty pretty awesome thank you so much <laughs> thank you uh that is something I, I was very happy to see we cut that back on last week with yeah. a libra pay and um you know anytime you because we set up all the financial stuff on the back end which was took half a day and uh that's a good way to get in touch with us and let us right. continue doing stuff but yay in the spirit of being open we do have a Amazon thing. Uh, if you're curious about anything that's in the studio, hardware wise, like, how's this thing? You know, you're looking like, what's that? There's that stand right there. So yep. <laughs> if you're curious with the networking, the video, electricity, storage, you can do it. Um, or just ask me and I'll help you out. And if you're curious about stuff we plan on buying, we do have a wish list. That's excitingly boring things like tripods and <laughs> computer cases. So. Ooh, that's a nice carbide case, though. I just want a square <laughs> box. There's no other reason. It's, it's like, a stool. It, it totally looks like a stool. I've seen one of those. You think I'm joking? IRL. <laughs> the thought of, like, that'd be good for shelf space over here. <laughs> <laughs> to put Jackbox in that. So, uh, and thanks, everybody, who's uh, donated stuff uh, from that Yay. list. Uh, <laughs> just, we couldn't do it without you. That's you. You're like Game Shark, like cheat mode. <laughs> and uh, we do the best we can and pretty transparent about what we spend everything and everything goes back into the show. So that is uh cool times anyway. Yep. Oh, hang on. We're horrible at shilling. One more. Don't hang up just oh, yet. The store. Merchandise. <laughs> store. Not letting escape. Yogurt would be very upset <laughs> if we didn't mention the merchandise. Yay. Get some <laughs> LWW shirts. Yeah. Yay. Yep. LWW t-shirts, uh, Francophile t-shirts, some hoodies, <laughs> Uh, not very, you know, seasonal, at least in the Northern Hemisphere for the hoodies, but hey, if you're in Australia, Australia <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can get some, uh, winter wear. I'm guessing it doesn't get all that cold in some parts of that particular country, but <laughs> New Zealand, <laughs> that's gets... further south. So yeah. <laughs> Dude, Tasmania. <laughs> yeah. That's like Australia. Yeah. Live in Tasmania? Mode. Yeah. Like four people. They're awesome. Uh, yeah, they know okay. each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, keep being awesome, everyone. And thanks for letting us uh, do this weird, weird experiment. And we Yay. <laughs> gotta get into a slice pot. We're running out of time. Boom. <laughs> yes. Oh, awesome. Yummy. That looks really good. So this is Hacker Pi. It is a 32-bit Kali Linux for the Raspberry Pi 4 has been released with a 64-bit version soon to follow. Wonderful. Um, Kali Linux has been always been so great at porting their security-focused software to the Raspi ARM SoC, and the 4 is no exception. And what's really cool is this new Kali will support onboard Wi-Fi monitor mode and frame injection support for the Pi 4. So that is a first and really, really awesome. It it it's you know just helping the Raspberry Pi um, in the security arena that much better. Just awesome. That packet injection and everything <laughs> else working out of the box with the Raspberry Pi 4. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I can see the articles coming. Random Raspberry Pi found near some yes. bank. <laughs> and that bank, ladies and gentlemen, was called NASA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true story go look that up um yeah yeah even back with like backtrack that was my oh look there's a web network oh, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. i need to get on the internet 
thing, but nowadays it seems like thirty War seconds driving. of IVS <laughs> yes. is hey, where we go. <laughs> I still have an uncle that does packet injection. I'm like, why do you have that? It's like reasons, <laughs> which we don't need that because you know, hey man, magic internet's everywhere now, and soon we'll have space internet and in our brain mm-hmm. needs controlling us. Uh, good to yeah, see. Yeah, actually. The, uh, like Cali themselves, they support just about everything. They have the uh, mm-hmm. Cali Net Hunter ROM for yeah. Android phones, mm-hmm. where it's just oh, it's Cali mm-hmm. for a phone. It's just one yeah, of the reasons I want a awesome. Nexus Five. <laughs> so you, yeah. so you're not gonna be like ring, 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 banana Cali. <laughs> ring, 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 DDoS. <laughs> yes. You you hacker, but you run like three arches. <laughs> It's the one distro I don't have on any of my laptops. <laughs> and and OSX. <laughs> I have a VM of that. <laughs> Last week, we talked about the most adorable heatsink for the Raspberry Pi ever made in the history yes. of ever. It Tiny. was like a little baby Hyper 212. Yeah. <laughs> and you might, might actually, if you didn't just buy it already, now you got an excuse to. This comes from notebookcheck.net. All of this in our show notes. Go check it out at your leisure. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation brushes off uh, that the Pi 4 has a temperature problem. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I'm gonna, well, let's see. The rival da, 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 has been a run up, right? It's Lon's CDAX. Uh, yeah, okay. It gets warm. All right. It, it, if you're running it at full load, <laughs> It has an integrated heat spreader to, as a piece of metal over the IC. But yeah, that's going to get hot if you're running at full tilt, period. It's going to throttle, period. Oh, yeah, especially if you have yeah. an ARM64 quad core running mm-hmm. at like 1.2, 1.3 gigahertz. Yeah. Yeah, they get <laughs> hot. And, you know, the Raspberry Pi 3 had overheating issues as well. At oh, launch. no, it didn't. And I've never yeah. seen I've, nope, I've never seen heat. Chill, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. Quit making stuff up. Uh, no, <laughs> depending on your use case. And um, actually, Ras- Raspberry Foundation used to recommend a heat sink and fan, and many of the Raspberry Pi 3 kits came with heat sinks and fans. And I'm sure uh, Raspberry Pi 4 kits will be no exception, and we'll be seeing those soon. And I have actually had heat sinks on my Pi 3s as well. So just in case to be careful. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so, yes, yes, the mm-hmm. Raspberry Pi 4 does have a temperature problem. The Raspberry yeah. Pi 3 has a yes, temperature, temperature problem. Temperature problem. <laughs> like, you see this uh, little <laughs> IHS here? That's the SOC. That's mm-hmm. all it's got for cooling. Of course it has a temperature problem. If you yeah. remember last week when we Actually, talked about the know, TD I, I, tiny I'm little... going to say, to be fair, it doesn't have a temp- temperature problem because it throttles accordingly. A temperature problem would be if it was <laughs> Yeah, it's not a fire. problem because yeah. it's throttling itself. Yeah. It does throttle itself, yeah, and powers down for yeah. overheating. But yeah. the, uh, that little um, tower cooler that we talked about for the Raspberry Pi last week uh, it, they specifically said it's like, yeah, the Raspberry Pi 3 B plus will hit 80 Celsius without even, you know, breaking a sweat. Mm-hmm. And with that thing, it cuts that temperature in half. So, yes, any kind of heat sink will help a lot. <laughs> I think it's important to just stress that uh, the (laughs) Raspberry Pi Foundation has the right response. They're like, this thing's not designed to run all out constantly. It's not the right use case for it. To which you should Mm -hmm. respond, touche. I'm going to go buy that adorable little heat sink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to uh, call out the Raspberry Raspberry Pi Foundation, they didn't do anything to dissuade people from writing articles like, the Raspberry Pi 4 is your new cheap desktop CPU. And also eats cats. (laughs) It's like, no, no, it isn't. It's a a prototype board. It's a mess around thing. I I honestly don't think the Pi Foundation has editorial control over (laughs) blog Pedro. I mean, this might be news to you, but I'm sure they have a press kit that they sent to some people. 
They would probably send one. T- you could prompt. Uh, you could literally walk <laughs> and pick one. I could probably walk into their office, knock on the door. It's like, yo, you got a press kit? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's better to send the internet and just theorize about what might go on. Anyway, beautiful people, we got to get out of here. Um, if you would like to send us a note, tell us what's going on in your life. If you have some questions, hints, thoughts, allegations that you would like to share with us. How can they do that, Pedro? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you could send us a pigeon uh, with a little flash drive. They're delicious. Yes. yes. Uh, actually, pigeon rice is... I, I grew up poor. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah the, best, the best way to do it is to go to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button and you fill out the form. Make sure in the little show box you pick LWDW because uh, that's where we get your feedback. Mm-hmm. You can also send some hate mail mm-hmm. for the uh, the Saturday show or some... Ask Jordan for some relationship advice. <laughs> that boy at right. Dude, I mean, stay tuned for that. We have an absolute wall uh, coming up this Saturday, so that should be interesting. All right, we yeah. got to bounce out of here. Uh, you are awesome. You are beautiful. So much so that we got to roll the credits. And Aww. thank you. <laughs> Allegedly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the uh, get out of jail free card nowadays? Allegedly. Uh, you know, when I realized that I, I genuinely had a moment where I was like, I'm out of arms. <laughs> You're out of arms. <laughs> you need to be an octopus bent. <laughs> This was a very real thing that just happened. It's like, I can't do that. I could mentally. I have the um, faculty stop. I just need that third arm. (laughs) Your nose sort of looks like a finger. So if you just scoot your head. There you go. (laughs) Aw. Yay. It's got the little tip. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, everyone. We love you. Bye.